Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us here on the program once again. Our guest is Dr. Kimberly Smith. She's head of global research and medical strategy for Viv Healthcare. And she's joining us here on the program to talk about some, some data from the ATLAS and the FLARE phase three studies for treatment for HIV. Thanks so much for joining us on the program today, Dr. Smith. Thanks for taking the time. Thank you for having me. Well, um, I personally haven't um, heard not nearly as much uh, about HIV here in, in recent, the last couple of years as I, as I have in the past. Um, give us a bit of your background and um, talk about your, your HIV research. Sure. Well, I'm an infectious disease physician. Um, I've worked for 20 years uh, taking care of patients with primarily HIV uh, in Chicago. And in uh, 2013, I joined Vive Healthcare uh, to, to lead the research for that, uh, for this organization. Vive Healthcare is a company that is um, really the only company that's 100% focused on HIV. So all we do is make drugs. Uh, for the treatment and prevention of HIV. And as I said, um, I personally haven't um, heard uh, as much uh, about it as I did in the past. Um, is HIV still as prevalent as it was, say, five, six years ago? Uh, well, unfortunately, yes. And, you know, in the United States, I mean, there are more than a million people who are living with HIV disease. There are uh, over 30,000 uh, individuals are uh, newly diagnosed with HIV disease each year, and that's been, uh, you know, fairly flat over the last, uh, really throughout the last 20 years or so. And so it's really continues to be a, a challenge that uh, that our country faces and is a worldwide uh, challenge. As you probably know, the, the there are more than 37 uh, million people in the world living with HIV. The overwhelming majority of them are in sub-Saharan Africa. However, uh, HIV really doesn't spare anywhere. It is it is a global uh, a global epidemic. So, needless to say, it is uh, just as uh, ominous as it has ever been. Even though some some in the media don't um, focus on it as much as some of the other things to. Uh, I guess, cause more fervor I think, in, you know, in error, in error, of course. Yeah. Part of why it has gotten less attention is that, you know, there are some, I guess, some myths, uh, you know, people believing that somehow HIV is cured or that it's not a problem uh, anymore because of treatment. And the reality is, is that, um, you know, as I mentioned, there continue to be people who are HIV. Well, it is for people who have access to treatment, it's not a death sentence in the way that it was in the past. Mm -hmm. It still is a significant issue. And, you know, the notion of taking medicine sort of uh, for the rest of your life is, is continues to be a challenge, which is part of why uh, the work that we're doing we think is so important because what we're trying to do uh, at Viv is actually make HIV treatment a sort of a, a, a less complicated mm -hmm. um, a lesser part of people's lives in general. And so that, that kind of brings us to the FLARE study. Now, the ATLAS and the FLARE studies, what it stands for something, as does FLARE. Talk about what these studies are and how in the treatment of HIV. Sure. So uh, these are our phase three pivotal studies for um, cabotegravir and long-acting rupivirine uh, for treatment of HIV. And so what does long acting mean? Well, when you think about most HIV medicines, even though we've made a lot of progress and have gotten to the point where people can take as little as one pill a day, mm -hmm. uh, taking a pill every day for the rest of your life is still a challenge for some people. And a lot of people describe themselves as sort of feeling like every time they have to take the pill, they're reminded of living with HIV and they want to be able to move on with their lives. And so Long-acting therapy with cabotegravir and rupivirine allows individuals to actually take an injection once a month uh, instead of a pill every day. And so these two pivotal studies, Atlas and Flair, were really designed to compare that combination of, at, of uh, cabotegravir plus rupivirine versus standard of care uh, regimens to determine if these long-acting therapies, again, um, injections once a month, compared to daily pills, uh, could be uh, just as good. 
And, you know, to, to cut straight to the chase, actually, we did demonstrate that, that the, the, the injection, the long-acting therapy works uh, just as well as taking a pill every day. Now, that it's interesting that you mentioned uh, some psychological reasons for um, noncompliance, whether severe noncompliance or just, you know, a, a small amount. What is it about mm-hmm. the injection and, uh, I guess, the simplicity of the injection as opposed to uh, the psychological uh, difficulty of, of taking a pill every day as opposed to taking a, an injection every month for the rest of your life? Or is that the case? Yeah. Well, you know, I think what we all recognize is that HIV is a disease that from the beginning of the epidemic was very stigmatized. Mm -hmm. Uh, People were judged as having done something wrong if they acquired HIV. Mm -hmm. And we we all know that that's not the case and that that people shouldn't be judged, but there continues to be stigma. So people have stigma, stigma that they experience from others. But there's also, you know, what has been described as self stigma. So individuals feel, you know, uh, guilty or they feel but they feel like somehow they've done something wrong because they're living with HIV disease. And as much as, you know, they can hear from others that, you know, they have no reason to feel guilty, they still have that sense. And so that self-stigma is part of what I, I mentioned when patients describe sort of the, the idea of taking away that daily pill and that daily reminder of HIV, um, that is something that's very appealing to patients. Now, this combination of drugs, aside from the the management of the HIV, uh, what about side effects? Are there any physical side effects that um, don't present with the injectable as opposed to the daily pill? Sure. Well, you know, so let's first talk about what are the side effects, the general side effects that we see with daily oral therapy. Mm-hmm. Because we've made a lot of progress, uh, uh, the medicines are tolerated a lot better than they were in the beginning. I, everyone remembers the days of people having to take 20 pills a day and having terrible uh, nausea and diarrhea and really mm-hmm. terrible symptoms. And so those, the medicines that cause those symptoms aren't used very commonly anymore. The, the pills that are used nowadays, people have, you know, maybe still a little bit of, of nausea occasionally. They may have um, some of the more long-term impact of being on medicines like uh, renal di- kidney disease or bone disease or cardiovascular disease. So they are associated with more long-term side effects as opposed to, to short-term side effects or immediate uh, side effects as they were in the beginning. The, the injection therapy in this, this first year of individuals being on therapy, the most common adverse event or side effect that individuals experienced was actually an injection site reaction, so pain at the site where they get the injection. Other than that, there were not really any other uh, adverse events that really stood out uh, for individuals on the injection. Were there any uh, subjects who were just fine with the daily pill, but they were given the injectables just you know to see if they would prefer or if it made no difference to them uh, personally? That, so actually, all of the individuals on the study were just that individuals who were oh. doing well on the on oral okay. therapy. So let me let me describe the studies maybe. And then we can just sort of dig in a little bit. So the ATLAS study we'll talk about first. So that study took individuals who were on therapy and stable on therapy for an average of four years. So these mm-hmm. individuals had, had been you know, doing well on their oral therapy for a long time. And they were randomized to stay on their oral therapy versus uh, switch to the long-acting cabotegravir plus ropivirine. And in that study, we looked at you know, how many of those individuals uh, maintained virologic suppression and how many individuals had uh, virologic failure. And I can tell you that it's actually less than 2% of individuals on the long acting. So 1.6% of those individuals actually failed therapy compared to 1% who stayed on their uh, original therapy. So really very little difference, uh, less than one percentage point difference. And so that uh, showed non-inferiority of the long acting regimen. So that was the ATLAS study. The FLARE study was a little bit different in that individuals came into this trial, they had never been on treatment before. And so they all started on one particular treatment, one fixed dose tablet that contained uh, a Bacavir, 3TC, and Dolutegavir in one pill. Everybody started on that until their virus got to be undetectable. After 20 weeks, 
those who who had an undetectable viral load were randomized to staying on that single pill versus going on the long-acting injectable cabotegravir rupivirine. And in that study, the proportion of individuals who experienced virologic failure was around 2%. So in the uh, long-acting arm, it was 2.1% compared to the uh, tablet or the oral therapy, which was uh, 2.5%. So a difference of of 0.4% favoring uh, the injection. And so when you combine these two studies, it really shows that they're really was no significant difference between the long-acting therapy and, and being on oral therapy. And again, this is starting out within comparing individuals who were doing well on therapy already. And so then you ask the question about preference, and, that, and we ask that question to patients as well. So we ask patients specifically, since they had been on oral therapy and on long-acting therapy, which one did they prefer? And in one study, 99% of individuals said that they preferred the long-acting, and in the other study, it was 97% of individuals. So there's no question that individuals who uh, were a- had this opportunity to be in this trial and switch over to uh, long-acting therapy preferred that over daily pills. But where can our listeners go online and get some more information about uh, Viv Healthcare and about these, uh, these studies, the ATLAS study, as well as the FLARE? So these studies were presented at uh, the uh, Conference on Retroviruses and Op- Opportunistic Infections, or CROI. And so if you go to the, web- the CROI website, you can actually see uh, the, the details of the abstract are actually available. You can look that up. But there are also a number of, even if you just sort of Googled uh, abitagravir plus ropivirine or Googled Atlas and Flare HIV studies, you could pull up a number of articles that have been published. We had, think, over 70 uh, articles were written, uh, focused that meant and talked about the, the Flare and Atlas study. So if they even just use, uh, as some folks call it, the Google machine, you could find a lot of information about Atlas and Flare. And if you want more information about these, uh, individuals can find us at uh, vivehealthcare.com. Thank you, Dr. Smith. Thank you for and have a good day. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. Transcripts and audio of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. And be sure and visit our affiliates page when you visit our platform at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. Thank you for listening to Health Professional Radio. We're very proud to be an independent broadcaster providing our content free of charge to you, the listener. One of the ways that we're able to remain free and independent is by having people like you become patrons. You can support Health Professional Radio simply by visiting hpr.fm and clicking the button that says Become a Patron. Your patronage of even just $1 a month lets us know that you're there, which in turn makes us more valuable to advertisers. And, of course, if you're able to afford more, then we would certainly appreciate the support. My name is Toby Longhurst from Health Professional Radio. Please visit hpr.fm, click the Become a Patron button and support us if you can.